Hello and welcome to this week's Two Minute Parsha. Last week in Parsha Svayichi, the Book of Bereshis ends with the death of Yaakov and Yosef. And this week, Parsha Shemois is the first in the Book of Exodus, the Book of Shemois, and we begin the real exile of the Jews in Egypt. First, we are told that the generation of those who came down to Egypt pass away, and those who remain greatly multiply in number. A new king rises in Egypt, and he starts to enslave the Jews by giving them very hard work and very, very difficult working conditions. Then he asks a Jewish midwife, Shifra and Pur, to kill all Jewish baby boys who are born. They don't do it, claiming that all babies are born before they arrive to deliver. Hashem rewards them in this merit. The pirate does not give up and he commands all of Egypt to throw all Jewish ma male babies into the Nile. A boy is born to the tribe of Levi. His mother puts him in a box in the Nile and his sister watches as the following events unfold. Batya, the daughter of Pari, comes to bathe in the Nile and upon seeing the child, she stretches out her arm to retrieve and to save him. She names him Moshe and in a funny twist of event, she employs his real mother to nurse him. Moshe grows up, the Torah tells us, and he saves the life of a Jew by killing his Egyptian persecutor. The next day, when he's trying to break up a fight between two Jews, the word of his killing the Egyptian gets out and he is forced to run for his life from the Pare. He arrives in Midian and he helps the daughters of, a local, of the local priest give, to give water to the herd and subsequently he marries one of the girls, Tzipur. They have a son who they name Gershon. The king of Egypt dies and the workload on the Jews become even more strenuous and even more torturous. Hashem sees this and the wheels of redemption begin turning. One day when Moshe is out shepherding the flock of his father in law, Hashem appears to him in a burning bush. And after much persuasion, Moshe agrees to approach the Pare and ask for the Jews to be set free to worship Hashem in the desert for just a few days. Hashem tells Moshe that his request will be denied and only after Hashem throws at Egypt many, many plagues will they let the Jews go. Hashem gives him three signs with which to convince the Jews that he is truly a messenger of God. First, his staff will turn into a snake and back into wood when he lifts it back off the ground. Second, his hand will become white from leprosy and heal upon entering his cloak. And third, when he pours water from the Nile onto the ground, it will turn into blood. Moshe still objects to his appointment because of his speech impediment. So Hashem appoints Aaron, his brother, as his spokesperson. Moshe then travels back to Egypt with his family, and Tipur, his wife, circumcises their son on the way. Moshe meets Aharon and updates him with his encounter with Hashem and his mission, and together they convince the Jews of their appointment, and they approach the Pari. As predicted, their request is denied and only met with more oppression for the Jews. The Jews complain to Moshe about this turn of events, and Moshe turns to Hashem for guidance. So finally, Hashem reassures him that in the end, with a strong hand, they will be driven from the land of Egypt. In summary, in this week's parasha, we have the enslavement of the Jewish nation, followed by the birth of their savior, Moshe. Bati then saves Moshe from the Nile. Moshe flees to Midian, where he builds a family. Hashem appoints Moshe as the redeemer of Israel, and Moshe and Aharon request from the, for the, from the Pari for the Jews to be let out to worship Hashem in the desert. Good Shabbos. See you next week.